Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I'm super excited about this. This is rice paper that is made and printed in Italy with my designs for unique vintage ephemera patterns that I collaborated with and was inspired and motivated with by Barb from Joggles. So Barb and I always um, come up with some wonderful, amazing ideas for projects and collaborations and ideas and stencils and all kinds of different things when we spend time together in person. And um, recently we spent time together in October. So you're really going to be um, having some interesting new things coming out soon but this has been something that I've had to keep a lid on because we worked on this a while ago and it has just become available just come back from Italy super excited about it unveiling it it is a beautiful paper to paint to glue down to work with um, really spectacular stuff so without further ado uh, if you've got a few minutes let me show you several things you can do with this paper. And I know that you're going to have several things that you come up with that you can do with this paper. And I'd love to hear from you what your ideas are. So uh, if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. I am so super excited to announce to you my brand new line of printed rice paper for joggles. Barb and I collaborated together on this series of botanicals, which is what's across the top, three different botanical designs with butterflies, moths, birds, bugs, bees. And then the second three designs are the U.S. mail vintage postage. So handwritten letters, stamps, cancellation marks, old airmail stamps, and that sort of stuff of the vintage U.S. mail. I really love collaborating with Barb on projects like this. This is a beautiful paper that is um, uh, printed in Italy, made in Italy for joggles.com. And it is a rice paper, a mulberry paper that's extra high quality with a little bit of fiber in it. It takes the paint beautifully. It soaks the paint all the way through to the core. If you add enough water, it takes tears organically and glues down and collage fabulously because it's so highly absorbent because of the excellent quality Italian rice paper that it is. So I've got several different ways that I'm going to use this paper and today I'm going to show you just a few possibilities and I hope that you will really enjoy using it as much as Barb and I enjoyed collaborating on creating it and so let's play. So one of the first ways I like to use this sort of rice paper is to brush golden fluid acrylic paints with a lot of water and let the color just soak through the paper and blend and bleed and see what happens in a multicolor application. So um, I have the rice paper on a sheet of palette paper. And even though I'm working on my nonstick craft mat right here, my desktop that nothing will stick to, here's some gold leaf uh, that's stuck there from the previous video and you can see I can just clean it up by scraping it off with my fingernail. Everything comes off of this but um, when I paint a piece of paper like this I don't want to pick it up when it's totally soaking wet and I want to move it so I can use my desktop surface again. So this is a 12 by 16 pad of palette paper. I'll paint the paper on this and then I can transport it over and let it dry someplace else protected on the sheet of palette paper. So especially now because I'm going to use a lot of water um, to paint the colors so that they bleed all the way through the paper to the other side. That way when you tear the paper it does not have white edges. So I'm gonna mix my paints on a used piece of palette paper right here and I'm gonna start with a little green gold. Let's start with that. So I'm gonna squeeze that out and put a lot of water in it. The nice thing about the Golden Fluid Acrylics is that they're very, very highly pigmented. They're professional quality and they're highly pigmented. So even when you add a lot of water, you still get vibrant color. So I'm not gonna to try to paint in individual elements on this, but I'm just gonna kind of move around with the color and I'm gonna put out the second green so that I can blend the two greens together while they're wet and sort of just you know, make some interesting color patterns on here. So then I'm gonna take out some yellow 
and apply that while everything else is still wet. And a little orange that I thought I would put in the butterfly, maybe with the yellow as well. So there's some orangey yellow in the butterfly. But like I said, I'm not trying to color in the lines so I can kind of blend my colors back and forth and mix around. Here's some turquoise thalo. That's like a bit of a teal color. Another very, very rich color. So we'll bleed some of that into things and we'll add some more water. That's a little bit of a dark color, so I might want to lighten it a little bit so I can still see my stuff that's going on underneath here. The black printing is really nice because it's going to show through this bold color that we're putting down. And that allows you to create this in any color combination. So we've got some beautiful colors blending in with the golden fluid acrylics. Let's get a little more yellow here with the green, color that bird. And you can see this is really taking on some really bright colors, really intense colors. And it's gone from a black and white sheet to a vibrantly colored sheet in a multiple colors. And that's what's great about buying it in black and white is that you add your own colors to it. You add your own colors and you can make it work for your own project. So another thing that I like to do on hand-painted paper is a little bit of splatter. So I'm gonna take a little teal and I'm gonna add some water and tap that against my finger. And I'm just gonna splatter a little teal into here. And since everything else is wet, the teal is going to bleed and blend as well. If I waited until everything was dry, the teal would make more of a crisp dot, but now it's going to sort of blend into the other colors, which I like a little more organic. So here's the green and blue version hand painted of the bees and bugs sheet of rice paper that I designed for joggles.com. Now I want you to notice that the color is bleeding all the way through this paper. This is colored all the way through. You cannot get this effect with anything but rice paper. So you could even use this paper backwards if you wanted to subdue. The, the black is very strong on the front, but if you wanted it to be a more subdued, subtle effect, you could flip it over and just let the black show through. So you can really see how absorbent and excellent quality. This is rice paper made in Italy. So that's the very bright colored version. And because I, it's very wet, you can see the colors will continue to sort of bleed and travel. And we could even add a little bit more of the turquoise thalo as a splatter and see if that kind of looks interesting because it's dark. And that would complement the black lines. So now I've added a little turquoise thalo splatter and that is really primarily green, but a beautiful sheet. So we'll set that off to the side. So here's another one. This is another version of the botanical bees and bugs. And we're gonna do this one in warm colors. So now I've got some red, some pyrrole red light that I'll put out and the orange pyro orange, the primary yellow, and let's try a little bit of gold metallic. And what else? A little primary magenta. So now we're in a warm color palette, which is gonna be different than our primary green and blue palette. And we'll do this same thing with this one. So I'll add a lot of water and brush my colors wet and bring the next color wet so they blend together. We get a little gold in here. With gold, you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of extra water because otherwise it's opaque. So in order for it to be transparent, we gotta add a little bit of extra water. And I'm just gonna blend that yellow right into the orange, blend this pyrrole red right into the yellow, come back with more yellow, bring it into bring the yellow into a color that I've already got down and let it blend right on the paper. And actually, while we're at it, let's grab some magenta because that's another warm color that's everyone's favorite, Conacridone magenta. Look at that, especially with the gold. So I'll blend that gold into the magenta. Then I'm gonna bring the red into the gold. 
a little bit more magenta. And this one, I really like the way that red looks. Get some more yellow. Now, in order to, um, if we wanted to lighten this up, we could get a sheet of uh, part of the roll of rice paper that I use in general to blot things up. And I'm going to press it into here and see if we lighten it up a little bit. And then I get this to work with on a future project. But I've lightened up some of the color so you can see the graphics a little more clear. And again, this has gone right through the middle of the paper. So when you tear it, it will not have white edges. It'll have colored edges. It's beautiful, bright, vibrant colors from the golden fluid acrylics bled all the way through. I'm going to let this one dry and I'll come back and splatter with gold on this when it's dry so that rather than it absorbing in the splatters, they'll stay crisp on the top. So that's a uh, a cool color, primarily a cool green color version, and primarily a warm color version of yet a different print. And then we've got one more print of the bees and bugs. So let's do this one in blue. So I'm gonna grab another sheet of the palette paper. And for this one, I'm gonna see what it's gonna look like with blue. So I'm gonna put out some Teal, some manganese blue, some turquoise phthalo, and some phthalo blue green shade. We'll get a lot of water from the water bucket. And I'm just going to, I am going to grab a little green and put that in this little green thing and a little yellow from my other palettes off to the side. And then we'll go the rest of it with blue. So we'll start with the manganese and a lot of water. And then to the turquoise, the teal. Everybody's favorite color is teal. A little bit of the turquoise. Thalo, that's a little dark. So you add water to that because it comes out pretty dark. It's gonna darken down you want to stay with colors that are high contrast to the black so that you can really see the black unless you want it to be really subtle and then you can go over it with very dark colors and it will be quite subtle but i want to stay with lighter colors so i can see it so i'm gonna water down my dark colors and or blot them so i can lift that up a little bit there's the teal bring that in the teal will lighten because it's got white in it. So we can bring that in to lighten some of this that got pretty dark. I could keep the turquoise thalo sort of to the edge areas where I might give it a vignette and there may be less graphics to cover. Let's bring in a little more green from the other palette just to give this blue a little variety. Here's some more of that very dark blue. So now we've got one of the bees and bugs that is primarily blue. And again, if you wanted to use it from the back, you could use it upside down and everything would be that much more subtle and it would give you a tie dye effect. And you can see why I wanna just let these dry right here on these palette sheets because they're very wet and I can move them out of the way with the palette sheets and let them dry. And they won't stick to this because it's that shiny palette paper. So when they're dry, they'll just pull right off and you can set them aside anywhere to dry. So with the US Mail, I thought I would gel print on these and I would use a couple of colors that would give me sort of a vintage um, aged ephemera effect with raw sienna, quinacridone, nickel, azo gold, and transparent yellow oxide. And for gel printing on um, the U.S. Mail, this is U.S. Mail number one. This is U.S. Mail number two. And this is U.S. Mail number three. And for these, I'm going to try um, rolling out color on my gel plate and see what this paper looks like tinted in sort of a sepia tone. Still got a little bit of red in it from the brayer, but I really like that. So now I'm going to go with the uh, Nickel Azo Gold. 
and we'll kind of put this out in a not a complete layer and we'll shift to get the part that we missed here and we'll give it that's a little dark um so the the rice paper is really absorbent so it absorbs the colors in really nicely even when you're just gel printing the surface so here's the raw sienna and i'm going to do that sort of in sections sort of moving around and printing different areas rather than a full print so i'm giving myself sort of that vintage aged look with three different colors and moving the color around on the gel plate. Now, I think that um, what could look nice on that too would be a little gold. And this is another one that I think I'm just gonna move around and, and I'm gonna put it on and get just a light print of it and turn it around and do another light print. Now gold is opaque and it's going to um, subdue or obscure some of the graphics, but I th still think it looks great. And I can always, before it dries, bring out that blotter sheet and lighten the surface by pressing another rice paper into it and pulling some of the paint off the surface. The other thing that you can do, because the gold is so um, opaque and is covered a little bit more than I wanted it to, I'm gonna put it on a palette sheet and bring in a little water, just some clean water and scrub at that gold a little bit. Move it around. This will help me blend my colors together a little bit. And once I do that, I'm gonna come back with that rice paper roll again and lift some of the color off. And there we go. Now we have a nice sort of antiqued color of this um, US mail number three. So I really like the way that came out. I'd like to go a little lighter. So I'm going to try then the transparent uh, yellow oxide because that's lighter than the Ozo Gold. I've still got some gold metallic in my brayer and on my plate. So I'm going to roll that around. And we'll take the US Mail number two design and we'll try that one. So this paper gel prints beautifully and takes fluid acrylics with tons of water beautifully. Look at that lovely color. That really looks antiqued and vintage. And we can even do a little bit more of it with uh, the raw sienna. I'll do the end here and the side. And the other side and the raw sienna is even a little bit lighter than the transparent yellow iron oxide but they're both light enough to give us this vintage antique kind of color added to the u.s mail and then what i'd like to do to it is put it on the palette sheet and i'd like to splatter it with the nickel azo gold because the nickel azo gold is a beautiful color and with a lot of water added to it and a splatter by banging the brush with lots of water and the paint against my finger, I can get a splattered speckled effect that will, le uh, that will also give us sort of that vintage feeling. Now the Nicolazzo Gold, because everything is still wet, is bleeding in to be um, a wet splatter that bleeds into the paper because the rice paper now is pretty wet. The surface is pretty wet, although the back is not soaked all the way through. 
the top is pretty wet so it's um it's bleeding out so we can wait for this to dry and then add a splatter on when it's dry and you'll get a completely different effect than when you splatter into wet when you splatter into wet it bleeds out when you splatter into dry it stays a little bit more sharp and then speaking of splattering we can just straight up splatter And you can see that because it's rice paper and it's highly absorbent, it takes the color and bleeds it out. So it's a beautiful paper for absorbing the paint and letting it bleed through the surface. This beautiful rice paper and um, made in Italy. Really nice properties. Look at that. Look at the way that that's bleeding through and creating sort of a, just a really nice kind of modeled effect. So we could go a little crazy and now splatter a little blue into it, which will blend in some ways into green. And then in some ways it'll stay blue, depending on how much of it lands in there with that Azo gold and how much of it lands on white. So here you can see a second color splat splattered in is giving us even a more interesting effect. So here you've got the splatter on the U.S. mail number one, and it's really created kind of a nice mottled color that really allows the graphics to show through. And then if you want something a little more subtle, we've got the gel printed U.S. mail number two with a little splatter on top of that. So the splatter goes through, but the gel printing does not go through. I'm going to grab another one and show you just one more thing that I think is interesting. So let's go with the, um, the raw sienna on the front with the gel plate, and we'll print this one, US mail number two. And we're gonna get good coverage over this whole sheet on the front. So that's a nice light color and do a little bit more. And remember, it's the contrast that allows you to see the black printing. So using a color that's lighter, much lighter than the black will make that printing show up a lot more. And using a color that's dark, similar to the black will make that printing show up less. Okay, so here I've printed this with the um, raw sienna. So it's sort of a nice yellowish brown on the front. And it's actually got a few uh, droplets in it from the blue over here. So I'm going to then move my gel plate and bring this palette paper back. And we're gonna lay it in that blue and let it sort of soak through from the back. And we're gonna get some interesting effects because the, this beautiful rice paper is so absorbent, it's gonna pick up and absorb the color that's on the sheet under here. So let's take a little blue off to the side and splatter it right on this rice paper, I mean on this palette paper sheet. And then we're gonna lay this gel printed sheet into that and allow that splatter to soak through from the back. So look at how beautiful that is right here, especially this area right here where it was lighter. So we'll put a decent amount of water and we'll splatter magenta right onto the palette sheet. by tapping that brush against your finger and then you're going to take your gel printed and this did have splatter on it as well but gel printed and then lay it into the splatter on the palette sheet and that splatter is going to come through from the back so it's going to be a little bit more subtle than if you put it on the top so we're just gonna pick it up. Because this beautiful rice paper is so highly absorbent, you're gonna get this really nice modeled effect, which you can see it better on white, 
with that splatter coming through from the back. And the front of this is pretty dry now. So as a last layer, I wanted to try putting a gold splatter on the front. So let's get a lot of water on the brush and we'll splatter. More water makes bigger splatters. And we'll splatter metallic gold on the front of this sheet. And we want to be careful about too much metallic gold because it is opaque and it'll 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 tone back the uh, black graphics. But as a splatter, it should be pretty subtle. So now I've added splatter to the front along with absorbed splatter from the back and a gel printing layer on this beautiful Italian rice paper with the vintage U.S. mail. Now, the combination on this one is a little different because it's a cool color with blue on the back and a, a warm color with yellow on the front. So this one is all warm colors with the magenta and the yellow and the gold. So, and then this one is a combo of warm and cool, but look at that's so much different. So let's take a, another sheet of the palette paper and let's do some teal splatter on the top of this one. So we did the blue absorbed from the back on the gel printed, and now I'm gonna put some, woo, that's big, a lot of water. That's okay though. Now teal is an opaque color, so it's gonna go over everything else that's on here because it's opaque. And the more water you put in it, the bigger the splatters are. So a little less water will give you smaller splatters. And again, you've got that handy rice paper that you can lift if it's too much and you want to get back down to sort of a finer splatter. There we go. So now I've added some teal splatter on the front, dark splatter on the back. The back is lovely, isn't it? And that would be something you could definitely achieve with this, splattering just straight on the front. That's really pretty with that dark blue. We can take that male one and we can gel print it in manganese blue, which is a nice, highly translucent blue. So it'll let all of our black graphics show through nicely. So here's how we're gonna add a lot of color evenly and quickly with the gel plate. And it's picking up some of the leftover yellow. So that's interesting. We'll do it a little bit more. There, so now we've got that in a nice blue shade. And we talked about splattering the blue with a little bronze. So here's a little bronze metallic. We'll do a little splatter with that on top of the gel print. And then we'll do a little splatter with the teal And that's sort of the, both of those are absorbing in a little bit because the gel print's still a little bit wet, but it's giving some nice variation. And then I'm gonna put out the, this dark phthalo blue green shade and do a little bit of splatter with that nice dark blue. I'm gonna make sure I have a lot of water in that because it's a nice dark color. And I'm gonna come back to the bronze a little bit more of that in there. And now we have a beautiful speckled blue version of the 
U.S. Mail number two. So there's some different ways you can color the papers, these printed rice papers from Italy. And then the, lastly, I wanted to show you how you could use them. So the, in this way, you can use them as um, for collage papers, for the background of journal pages, for all kinds of different things, uh, place cards. Um, you could back them with um, something rigid and make note cards out of them. All kinds of different ways you can use these. I would use them in my collage work a lot. So the last way that I want to show you that I think that these uh, printed rice papers with the vintage ephemera look would be really cool would be to glue it down to a canvas panel and use it as the background for a painting, a collage, mixed media. Um, so I'm going to take some soft gel gloss from Golden and my brush and just adhere the soft gel gloss liberally to the whole canvas panel. Then we're going to take the paper and line it up. And again, because this is highly translucent and absorbent rice paper, it is going to glue on there beautifully and nice and flat. And when this is dry, you're going to flip it over and take an X-Acto blade and cut it along the edges to trim it. But so now it's going to glue down beautifully to this canvas panel because rice paper, mulberry paper is really absorbent. And then to subdue the black so that you have a more neutral background for your artwork, you're going to take gesso and some water. You want to get water in there with the gesso because the gesso is totally opaque if you don't water it down. So it'll block out all of the art on the paper. So how much you want the art to show through depends on how much water you add to the gesso. So you can subdue this a lot and make it very, very subtle, or you could subdue it just a little, but the gesso is gonna be the key to that and how much water you add to it. So here you can see I'm toning back that black pattern with the gesso and I can make this really subdued and a nice neutral sort of white for a colorful flower or something botanical could go on top of it. That's what I have in mind. So I'm making sure I get this gesso coverage out all the way to the corners. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And there you're gonna have a nice sort of toned back, beautiful bees and bugs and botanicals and butterflies background for something organic like a flower or a plant that could go over the front. So I'm just going to subdue that back a little bit more with the gesso. I'm going to knock back those blacks so I get a nice subtle background on my canvas panel for a mixed media piece of artwork. And it adheres really beautifully to this canvas panel. So there's a few ideas of things that you can do with my new printed rice paper made in Italy from joggles.com. I hope that you will check out the links below the video, um, below the video for the rice papers and other products used in this video. Thanks for being here. Happy Friday. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Joggles. Thank you, Italy. Thank you, rice paper.